be my everybody is looking to befriend people on the top. Everybody's looking to befriend the people who are hot now. And I tell people this again and again, look to your right, look to your left. Those are the people who are going to be the next leaders of tomorrow. Those are the people who are going to be the next gatekeepers and in, in a high executives that you can say, I've been friends with this person for 20 years, but we have to change the way that we look at things. Everybody wants to jump the line. And I just think it's so important, even as I'm hearing you mention some of these names, of course, you can get in some of these rooms because you've been knowing these people long before that they became the executives that they are today. Oh uh, man, I so 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 both of those people in particular, right? Um, mm-hmm. So Dia, I, I met Dia. Dia Puff called me. I was actually I remember I remember exactly where I was at. He, I was in I was in um, in Delaware, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. At my son, my oldest son's uh, baseball tournament. He called me and said, "Yo, would you mind spending an hour on the phone with my assistant?" She's and he's like he's like she's about to become chief of staff, but I really think she's talented, and I want her to run Blue Flame. Can you spend an hour on the phone and talk to her about what you did when we built it and what you think it should be going forward? And I remember getting on the phone. And, you know, most people are like I'm not talking to this guy. <laughs> I'm not that right. Um, so I remember, and I remember getting off the phone and being like, "You know, she gonna get it done because she she has she asked all the right questions. She 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 was focused, right? And then Erica Pittman." Erica was Lynn Burnett's assistant, I want to say, at when we first started, um, what was the name of that company? That Vanguard? Vanguard, at Vanguard, right? So, so when I, when I, and I left Vanguard, so what we, I helped start Vanguard, and I left Vanguard before I really even got off the ground to come work for Puff. Um, and I remember Erica Pittman, she might have, she was, I mean, she was like right out of college or something like that, or the first job or second job ever, right? Um, but again, you know, you you could you one of the things that I pride myself on too, and, and I think this is this is probably Puff's number one skill set is um, you know seeing talent um, at a young at a young at, at, at its early inception, right? Um, and and I think that the ability to give people credit when it's not obvious is not holding them to like the conforms of traditional skill set, right? So like even like a guy like Henrock. Uh, you know, Hen- Henrock yep. was like, I think, Henrock, for many years. I think Henrock worked for you at the time. Worked, right? Yeah, Henrock yeah, worked for me for many years. He was on the street team. but And it's funny because I remember moments where we would do the white party at Puff's House in the Hamptons and Henrock would be invited. And some of the VPs and SVPs of the company weren't invited. And I remember having to explain people to people, there's a difference between a bad boy party and the Sean Combs party. And Sean Combs, is the most successful intern of all time. He sees talent in people, and and, and talent is not in the traditional, or actually it's it's probably in the, because I remember I had an argument with Puff one time. He said to me, you don't think I'm smart. And I said, no, I I wouldn't say that I don't think you're smart, but I I just think it's, you know, you gotta, it's something, and and we went and looked at the definition of smart, right? And the definition of smart is way wider and more encompassing than what we've allowed ourselves to believe. We believe that smart is, you know, knowing the Pythagorean theorem, right? And, and to be honest with you, like having people skills, having social skills, sometimes, especially in the business that we're in, those things will take you further. And that's something that a guy like Henrock had at a very young age. Now he needed to smooth this thing out. And, you know, that was going to come with time as he got older. And I was seeing him being super successful today. But like, you, like, you got to understand that this thing is not traditional. Like everything that we're doing, there, there's no, there's no manual for this, this, this universe that we built, right? And that's the power. Like we're in this crazy moment where, right, our parents were a part of like the civil rights movement or, or a byproduct of that, right? And 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 they struggled to give us the opportunities and put us in the places that we were, but they didn't know. They didn't have, they didn't say, hey, you guys can create an industry, that multi-billion dollar industry and have a piece of that and be owners and entrepreneurs. They didn't know that, right? But they but they knew that they wanted us to give us the skill set to be able to figure that out. Now the kids that we're raising are looking at we what we've done, and now like being an entrepreneur is normal, right? Like right. So I'm saying that my mom wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer to be successful, my kids can see they know a million, they know they got Uncle Puff, right? They look at like, you know, I remember I took my kids, my older kids to um to Maine America and we went backstage and we're talking to Jay 
and you know now my kids are older and they're looking at and, and Jay's you know they're looking at it you know they're being extra cool and Jay's like yo give, give me a hug like what, what y'all doing y'all come on bring it in you know what I mean and so and so because that because that's how um you know, unaffected they are. Like most people get a chance to be around Jay Z, they trying to take a picture, they trying to right, and, they, and my kids is being cool. Like, you know, you know what I mean. And he's like, Nah, what you doing? I've known you your whole life. I, I knew your dad before he had kids. Right? <laughs> so, so yeah, man. I think that, um, you know, you you bring up an interesting point in terms of um, just be. First of all, like I said, just generally, if you look at yourself as a brand, right, you want to sell your brand to everybody, right? You, you don't want to have a brand that's just for one person. Just uh, like, You don't want to be a person that manages up. I only do a really good job of talking to the CEO. I only do a good job of talking to anybody VP above. You want to be somebody, I remember like I've, I've been the only black person in a lot of rooms too, right? And, and I really, really prided myself on, I felt like Muhammad Ali in the office, right? Because I, I was like the guy that the, you know, the guy in the mail room could look to and be like, yo, I could be that someday, right? So usually, usually the black and brown folks that didn't work at these companies were not in real senior positions. And so I've, I've, I've made my point to make sure to connect with them, to know their names, to know things about them, to help them out, to give them opportunities that they wouldn't get. So I would be giving them tickets to stuff because you know, if we don't raise our people up, who will, right? And right. so and you don't want to be that, you don't want to be that only black person in the building forever. Right, that that's that ain't. Then you didn't. Ooh, you hold didn't up, really stay there. Oh man, I love that. Let's go back. You don't want to be the only black person in the building forever. Do you understand how powerful that statement is? Yeah, because if you did, if, you, if that's because you didn't do your job, you didn't do your job. Your job is not the work. Whew. The job is the upliftment of the people. Like we, we're all. I don't. I'm irrelevant. If it ain't for the people, if I can't call on the people, if I can't help move the people, then I haven't done my job, right? And so, and, I, and I, I'm trying to tell you, I would have straight fights and arguments. Like, so, you know, I worked at, so, you know, I've had the, like you, like you said, right? I've had a super duper blessed career. You know what I mean? I, I worked with Shaq. I, work, I went from Shaq to working with Lynn Burnett and Keith Klingscales um, and Jeff Tweedy in, in the middle of, uh, Jeff Tweedy and Shaq. So, um, Lynn Burnett, Keith Clean Scales, you know, Puff with Derek Ferguson and, and Andre Harrell, like, right, that's crazy, right? And then I left that and worked with Dane Dash. And then I was with Jay and and, and John Manili and Tracy Wibb and Jay Brown, right? Um, and then and then I started working with these big public companies, you know, Neil Cole, Kenneth Cole's brother, mm -hmm. um, and my man Yehuda, who I who I still call my brother to this day, right? Um but when I got into those rooms where I was the only black guy, which was dramatically different, right? Because you know the energy of working at a bad boy entertainment, right? Correct. You know the energy of working at a Sean Carter Enterprises. Like it's, you know, it's, it's family. It's family. And when we disagree, it might be a fist fight, but we, de we definitely end the party later on the night together, right? Correct. You go to these other companies where you're the only black person, it's different, right? Like, you have a conversation, you think you're on the same page, then you find out that that person went behind your back and it ain't what you thought it was. Like, it's just, it's different. And I fought for every, because first of all, I was very intentional around hiring black folks in those companies, mm -hmm. right? I, I mean, in the, in, the, in the Iconics, Neil Cole world, I brought the black folks with me, right? I was able to work with, and I, and I still consider them my family today. So, you know, Bertia and Alicia Smalls, um, you know, I fought for them every time that we had reviews to become VPs. I was like, yo, y'all need to put these, these black women because I'm looking at these other people who have privilege in these roles who are, aren't even nearly as talented as them, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, some black folks would get in that room and be happy to be the only one there because that means that they're good. Wow. But, but if we ain't good, then I ain't good. Right. If we ain't good, then I ain't good. I, I didn't do my part. Talk that talk, Jamil. Talk that talk. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.